Welcome to Rally Croatia! An asphalt location filled with fast twists and turns, bumpy asphalt and high elevation changes. Alignment is very important for tracks like this because you want to have the best grip possible on those corners. So in order to achieve this, you want to add a little bit of toe out to the front tires and some toe into the rear tires to enhance the stability overall, but also on corner exits. Here, both front and rear camber angles have to be set at a higher value to achieve maximum grip and cornering. Don't worry about the decreased grip on a straight line, because this race has only 30 straights anyway. Differentials are easiest to set on asphalt tracks. Add just enough driving lock to enable the car to put the power down effectively, but do not overdo it, because it may result in too much oversteer on corner exits. Braking lock should be at a minimum value, because too much will induce excessive understeer when coasting on corner entries, and too low of a value may destabilize the car under braking. As for the preload, again a medium value will make the understeer and oversteer work in harmony, reducing the need for too many steering corrections when approaching the corner apex. As mentioned above, the asphalt here in Croatia is pretty bumpy, so the dampers have to be adjusted accordingly. A soft slow bump value will do the trick here, but do not set it too soft, because combined with a lower ride height, you risk hitting the bump stop, which can lead to loss of control. As we all know, fast bump reacts to jumps mostly, but in this case we don't have any jumps present on these tracks. This means that we can use the fast bump to absorb more of the larger bumps and drops. Just a little on the stiffer side here and set the bump division to a medium value, because a lower value will allow the fast bump to absorb too many small bumps and the car may feel too stiff and uncontrollable. So we don't want that. The most important thing in any motorsport is to maintain contact with the road at all times. Although, in reality this is not mandatory. So you want to have soft rebound to allow the dampers to extend fast enough to push the wheels down when the car wants to lift off the ground when traveling over bumps and crests. On the braking tab, you can go for a stronger braking force as the surface is very grippy and you should also set the brake bias more to the front tires because they bear most of the weight when the car is braking. In terms of handbrake force, it should be set just enough so you're able to rotate the rear end of your car before U-turns and tight corners. A medium value like this one will give you just enough control and feel when using it. To be honest with you, I rarely use the handbrake on asphalt tracks and when I do, it's on downhill stages. Not gonna lie, but the gearbox was the most time consuming thing to set right for this track. For a fast and twisty track like this one, you will want short gears to promote acceleration, but also a longer final drive to promote speed. So after countless hours of tweaking the gearbox, this is what I came with. In the springs tab, you should not set the right height as low as possible, even though the surface is asphalt, because as we talked earlier, this asphalt is pretty bumpy, so it's better to leave some room for more suspension travel. You can go 1 or 2 pips on the softer side with the spring rate, but I do not recommend a softer value than this, because you want the car to be planted on the road. And last but not least are the ARVs, or anti-roll bars. Due to the nature of the surface, I didn't stiffen them too much to allow the wheels to move more independently over bumps. Plus, I felt excessive sliding on some corners due to too much weight being distributed to the outside tires, causing them to lose grip. This setup right here put me in the 5th place on the global leaderboard, so I'm really happy with the way the car handles. I hope it will do the same to you, and if it does, please leave a like, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one, leave your thoughts in the comments, and share this video with your friends and family. There is also a thanks button under the video if you want to support me further. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you on the track, bye bye!